In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced, and it brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Scripton is now the man of steel. Superman! Who best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, wild mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Now listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. <laughs> Beware, you fools. My electrophanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware. I strike at midnight. This nut may go dead. of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton. And there's this one, like, uh, this thing with like, a bunch of, like, you know, toy heads on it. Gross heads, and other heads, really small heads. And I take a picture of it, and just when I take a picture of it, 
sure I realized that it's a hand case. <laughs> Yeah, like the wolf comes out of the door, you can sort of you guys, and then we all look up. 
<laughs> yeah, see it on there. Yeah, yeah, we can see some of the deer from here, so we can like. Yeah.
happens a lot. Whoa. <laughs> it looks like a real part of this. Yeah, yeah right. like, what, what, what is it? It's got to catch up to itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all the best parties are anyway. This is the future we're playing music to the internet. Oh, it's weird to go Yeah, I remember I hope you're too friendly here. Oh, shit. Like, through broadcast. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so there's stickers? Oh, that's awesome. So it's, it's Day and possibly Pat Malone? Yeah, and who knows who else? Alright. Hey, everybody. I'm Phil Corbett. Phil Corbett! Hey, hey the internet. Uh, this song is called Trek Again.
gonna leave here just for the order. There's been a power surge that got forsaken border. Yeah, I see lighthouse, we're burning stronger. Have to look to it for coastline no longer. Let that out, let that out, let that out. Let that out, let that out. Let that out. Sorrow in my cheeks, feel it burning hotter. I'm gonna leave this not a gun that for water. It'll be the death of me, slight inclination. Y'all stand and stare down, attracting information. Gonna burn the bridge and get us all the ropes. Forget about it. Have to learn to cope. Y'all learn to cope. Y'all learn to cope. Forget about it. Have to learn to cope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, I got one last song and then some of Sick Antelope Party will be coming up to do some poems. And if you guys know the words, you should sing along to this one.
Honey, there is nothing radio about me. Nobody can smooth polish onto the chipping stumble of my bumbling stutter. My rhythms can never float to a practice drummer. There is a metronome in my poem box that always points to the ocean. My creative process is running to the shore, breathless and barefoot, and trying to breathe in the entire Atlantic in a pulsing tug of war, filling my lungs with glowfish and ghost eels, searching on the intake of hungry story fake for the experience of feeling everything at once. I'm the lanky kid on the beach with seaweed in my hair and no car to return to. I cannot be a woman for you. But I can be a person for me. I'm not a smooth jazz sonata. I'm a jaywalker in a silly hat. And my best poems are the ones I don't know how to find in myself yet. They live in tent cities in the deepest jungle of my fever, only occasionally baring their wild teeth to the surface to steal news clippings from my memories. And I fear I will someday be one of them. Until then, don't look at me like a flower. I've used the word blooming in a hundred poems, but I will never dare invoke bloom past tense. This forest is so dense, I can smell the ink of novels that haven't been written yet on the coastlines of the spreading vines. There are glowfish and ghost eels making radio wire nests in the branches. Honey, there is something radio about me. I'm the wave crest of contradictions, pop crackling in the static. My stutter has my stutter has a pattern. I'm singing to the open air before I learn it. You can find me by turning that pop song one click of the dial to the side, looking the sun straight in the eye, then watching the corners of the patterns it casts on everything else. Look for me there and tell me what you find. I'm still searching myself. One with the light show. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, this is really cool. I never tell stories from the beginning because I never understood how things begin. Like how when dust collapses into star guts, as though fusion just happens sometimes when things get close, you never realize that gravity was on your side while you were falling, turning gases into synapses that sputter and spark universes. At what point does hydrogen become soul? I know what I've been told, that in the beginning there was nothing, that the vacuum can't exist in a vacuum, that everything starts somewhere. Yes, in the beginning there was nothing, but out of nothing beginning spread thundercloud seeds that sprouted fruiting bodies to build societies and skyscrapers from. So don't tell me how it all began, because somewhere in the Kuiper Belt, bullets profess love to bones unbroken like icicles pulled from rooftops into streets, spilling over with revelry. We are made of giants and thunderclouds. Every piece of your heart is a stellar symmetry where hydrogen learned to be chemistry. We were always forged in fire. And every piece of your mind is a forest of lightning, trees that appreciate the colors of fall, the smell of the mountains after the thaw. This is the point of it all. We're the children of stars. We were not made to sit in the dark this long. We were for roaming the wilds, for dancing round fires, for fearlessly flying into spiral arms, for turning dust into dinosaurs, thoughts into thunder that bends space and stops time. There is beauty in the most simple of matter, hydrogen finding itself in a mirror, skipping stone glances across the surface of what eternity looks like from here. We spill our contents across space, like supernova poetry, so forests take root in the soil of our throats, may they never stop growing. At what point does hydrogen become soul? The moment we started glowing. Alright, so I'm going to do one that used to be like my go-to poem, but I haven't visited it, visited it in a couple months, so I hope I remember the whole thing. There are days when the lightning puts me to sleep. Days where the storm swallows around me like the petals of a flower closing. A passion to communicate singes my blood like burning filament, but still the bulb shows no intention of blooming. This always happens when it is snowing. When I'm alone in the mountains that trap my thoughts like maladaptive bandages, is a light bulb really electric if no one is around to see it glowing? Are these lit radio towers in everyone's hearts doing any good when the signal that reads out cannot be read out by any... Art 
is splattering our brain waves across canvases. Because if someone else can run their hands along the paint, if someone else runs their hands along the paint, along your face, oh geez, man, I really don't have this. But you do. <laughs> can we skip forward in something else? Or like, can we do a different one? We can do whatever you like. And provision works too. I've never been good at that. I do Song and dance? Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm just going to grab this off my cell phone. She's a loyalist. Mm. Emily Dickinson will be proud. your face that is a fragile proof that maybe it isn't all so fake. We build ourselves like giants with philosophy and education and attempts at self-actualization because we are praying that the next generation of painters and scholars will stand on our shoulders. We pray that the treads of their sneakers will teach us that we are solid by not falling through. They're, they are always falling through. Lover, I didn't mean for this to be about you, but when I laid my heavy head upon your chest, your heartbeat sounded like mine, like two light bulbs clinking together like wine glasses, basking in the warmth of trying to understand that we are both the same in there. We were astronauts trying to kiss with our spacesuits on. We kept praying into the coating of our eardrums closer, closer, like we thought somehow we'd arrive before you left. When I drifted out of the fog of you, I saw it had once again been nothing but my own breath fogging up the glass. So here's my last stand, with paint on my hands, holding every contour of my skin far closer than you ever had, I cast myself into the microphone line, like a fisherman's prayer. This is a borrowed metaphor. I've never invented a word, and with this language, I build my mind on a framework of someone else's invention. We arrange our cognition from the bones of giants as to share what we have borrowed. I hope this is more than a confessional. I hope if I pour my soul into this chapel and it rings between the, the cracks in the floorboards and the eyelashes of the steeple, these words will lend themselves to someone else's poems. I am shouting in a desperate attempt to hear you. Oh my god! You killed Santa! Yeah, that was chaos. It's fine, this is fair. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, there is always a spare Santa. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's true, though. Yes, I believe yes. it in my heart, and therefore it must be true. Gather round, my friends, and I will tell you what Virginia taught me. It is an old song sung to the cadence in your rib cage, one with parts for all of us to play. I can hum a few bars for you if you'd like. Be mindful of where the rests are built in. They will guide you to the next movement. Do not be afraid to follow along, even if you don't know how it goes. Nobody ever really got it wrong, even when their voices were sharp and their words fell flat. They never got it wrong. They just made something new. Like our attempts to sing in tune rang false to their ear, because what they could hear was a world set in a different key. One set to unlock and see the magic this music box contains. It's just a small tune. It swims within your veins when you need it close by, and in backpacks and back pockets where you keep your spare change. And when you need to make change, let the meter in your spine be the only curve that you measure yourself by, so that when you see fire dancers in their element, you know what it takes to keep sparks alive. Dance with them until the thunderclouds soak your bones, but never let your flame die. And when you see mountains shrouded in mist and the wide open ocean like a mouth of the abyss, you will know what it means to stand beside giants. Keep standing. Mm. Keep singing your songs like the mountains themselves will be dead and gone before you run out of breath. And before long you will know how to sight read 
ridgetops, and you will know the road by how it feels beneath your feet. And you will know that strangers are just friends that you have yet to meet. And in the music box they carry in their ribs, a familiar rhythm beats. Oh yeah. <laughs> Walks into a 
press and and any votes on any other songs that we should do? Jaywalking? Yeah, we can do jaywalking. Oh, right, fine, okay. some banjo for these last two songs. <coughs> no, it's the best. We actually, once upon a time, had a flute player who used to play the bubbles on fluteless songs. Oh, cool. <laughs> if you're out there, Jackie Pratt, hello. <laughs> about living in your hometown for too long. I woke up on a Sunday with nowhere to go. My thoughts no longer interesting to anyone I know, but that's alright. I feel fine, but not okay.